Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and in this video, my game room is basically done, or at least done enough for uh, my intents and purposes. There's still a few little things I want to do and I want to polish up down here, construction stuff from one of my overhead lights not working, like the bulb back there. But yes, my game room is basically done. I have my games behind me, organized by console, from Atari 2600, the NES, to the PlayStation, Xbox 360, and the Wii. Obviously there's more stuff in there than that. I also have some random bits and bobs and goodies over here, like my NES in the box, my handheld consoles, and my questionable beverages of choice. I say questionable because I'm just not a fan of energy drinks. Anyway, yes, my game room is basically done. Now I can come down here when I have some free time and I can just play my consoles. I can play games that, you know, bring back waves of nostalgia. Games who just deserve to be put on pedestals of their significance in the retro gaming world. And also irritate and annoy the crap out of myself when I play horribly bad games. But for right now, the whole point of this video is addressing and fixing a problem that I have down here for my game room. So the video I'm talking, so what I'm talking about is when I did the uh, thermal take video, I talked about my Ryzen build. I talked about a change of plans. See, originally that computer was supposed to be my main gaming computer, um, editing machine, and capture machine. And that was the intention behind it. That's why I beefed up the RAM to 32 gig. That's why I upgraded the video card like I did. Went with an AM4 board. But uh, one of the problems was, was I discovered when I did the PS1 racing video, the Genesis follow-up video. And hopefully I can actually put the clips right there. <laughs> hopefully. Um, but anyway, when I did those videos, um, I basically had to carry the consoles upstairs, which wouldn't be that big of a deal normally, except for the fact that they were already all hooked up, which kind of meant I had to reach by my television, unhook the Genesis, I had to unhook the PlayStation 1, I had to carry upstairs, hook them up to my main computer, and play that way, which is fine. It really is. Except for the problem was after doing it for two videos, I realized a kind of a hindsight on that, on that. Because that meant for every console I wanted to direct capture, whether it was NES, Atari, even PS3 and Xbox 360, and especially the Wii, considering, a, considering sensor bar, I would have to carry all that stuff upstairs, get it all set up on my computer desk, and record from there. And then I had to bring it all the way back down here to hook up, so if I wanted to play a game and not record, I could just play it. Well, that also, if I ever screw up a recording, like I actually did with the uh, Genesis follow-up, I'd have to do it all over again. And that, since my main computer's upstairs and my game room is down here in the basement, I gotta go up and down stairs. And I'm pretty sure my wife would not be happy if she got a phone call saying that um, I was currently in the hospital because I broke my arm or my leg or got a concussion because I tripped down the stairs on a PlayStation cable or a Nintendo controller. I'm pretty sure she would kill me. Like, 100% sure she would kill me. So this video, I'm actually going to be building a PC to rectify the situation. I'm going to be building a capture PC whose sole purpose is to be down here hooked up to my game console systems um, and basically act as just a dedicated capture PC. Now obviously this is going to actually screw up a little bit with my wiring because I'll have to get some more get more splitters and um, some more switch boxes. This also would make it easier to direct capture vintage PC stuff because of my capture PCs down here. I don't have to worry about carrying, you know, any rare or hard to find PCs or anything that I spent a lot of time fixing or repairing or restoring or installing software for games up and down stairs and risk tripping and falling with that because there's always a risk. I mean, I'm not that big of a klutz, but I'm a klutz. With that being said, let's talk about the goals I have for this machine. It needs to be powerful enough to be able to run OBS and all of my capture software. It needs to have enough SATA ports and modern-ish SATA ports for me to run hard drives and SSDs for all the storage. Even though I'm going to be basically capturing composite or even HDMI with the Xbox 360, that's not going to take up that much storage right away. But hour, two hour long recordings are going to take up some space and I need to make sure that I have a computer that can hold that much storage. 
It also needs to be on a casual budget. That's the important thing. I cannot justify spending even 300, 500 bucks to build a PC from new hardware parts or even slightly used hardware parts. That's something I'm only gonna be using maybe, you know, at best once every two weeks when I'm doing direct capture. Ideally, I'd like to do it daily, but that's far off into the future. So if I could get use out of it, you know, once, you know, once a week to do direct capture on games, fine, great. Now, obviously I could use any of my retro hardware. I have Core 2 quads I can use. I have uh, the Core i series, but I wanted something modern enough where I can run Windows 10 or a more, more likely modern Linux while also being old enough where if something happens to the hardware for whatever reason, I'm not gonna be out you know, too much money or too much headache from trying to rebuild it later on. So I was going through a bunch of motherboards that I have and a couple of them were just way too old. Besides the board that I used in my wife's gaming PC, which again, there's gonna be a video on that here pretty soon, all my stuff was actually pretty old and outdated. Um, I did find that I didn't even realize I had a gigabyte board. So this is a gigabyte GAH81M-S2H. Uh, I was going through my box of parts. I actually remembered I had this 1150. I bought this off eBay uh, last year, right before I bought that Ryzen board because my intention was to use a i7-4770. I don't know, I guess I was just thinking if I could build another gaming computer to up replace this one cheap, that I would, and according to Steam, you know, average specs for Steam, this would have been more than enough. Most of the games I was going to run, plus my editing software, I'm just really glad I changed my mind and went with Ryzen. But yes, this thing has, this board has the features that I want. Uh, it has four pin CPU fan headers, so I can only use two fans, but it has a COM port, serial parallel port, a uh, TPM port, which I don't need, uh, USB, USB 3.0 header, four USB 3.0 headers. So if I have any external hard drives or any capture cards that are used at USB 3.0, plenty of speed, plus HDMI output, which is going to be important, plus gigabit LAN, which I'm not gonna be using anyway, and integrated audio and PS2 mouse keyboard for legacy stuff, which I'm not gonna be using. I'm gonna be putting a wireless uh, keyboard and mouse on here uh, so that I can sit back on my gaming couch and uh, go that route. And this thing does support the i7 up to the 4790K, if I remember correctly, but it doesn't support the the options that the K can use. Like it doesn't support the overclocking. So it's not going to be getting any benefit of me using a K variant CPU. Because the CPU of choice, the i7-4770. It is a 3.4 gigahertz. I think it turbos up to 3.9, I believe. Um, four core, eight thread processor. This is gonna be more than powerful enough to run OBS and all my direct capture stuff. To keep this big beast cool, I'm going to be using this um, stock-ish <laughs> cooler. Um, I say stock-ish because it is a stock uh, cooler from an i7. In fact, but the fan was this cheap, like five blade thing. I've had some weird name on it, I don't remember. And it was extremely noisy. So I popped the fan off of a different cooler. In fact, I think this is off of a Core 2 Quad of some kind. A stock cooler off like a Core 2 Quad, like a later one. And I actually was able to get the screw on it. It is on there. So it is gonna keep it cool. Ooh, I just realized something. This doesn't have the bracket for the cooler. I might have to put that i3 in it because I don't have any other cooler except for one of those quick pin ones that the i3 is used. For RAM, two sticks of oh, crucial DDR3 1600 1 1.5 volt CL11s, eight gigabyte each. So a total of 16 gigabyte. Yes, this is overkill for OBS and it's gonna be overkill for the operating system of my choice, which I'm gonna use for storage, or at least boot storage anyway. A enterprise grade Dell SSD. I don't remember where I got this. Um, but I ran it through a couple of disk checks, some disk checking software, and it has like almost no hours on it. So I'm not sure what it was. I don't know if somebody bought it with the intention to use it in their PC. 
and they just put in a box of parts that I picked up at a parts lot or something or what. But yes, I'm gonna go with SSD for a boot drive because I want this thing when I do need to power it up, I need to power it up quick. If I do need extra storage, I'm probably more than likely going to put a uh, actual hard drive in here, like a one terabyte one just for storage, but we'll see when, we'll see when that comes. For a PC case. El Generic El Cheapo. Um, I picked up, uh, I think what I mentioned when I did the, uh, the AGP test bench video, which by the way, that computer is not working very well. It's having even more issues than I thought. I picked up a bunch of these MATX cases. They're older cases. They're all from like, uh, well, for example, it doesn't even have USB 3.0 front. So the USB 3.0 header on this board is useless for now. I do plan to get a, uh, a drive bay that has 3.0 support. But I picked up a bunch of these MATX cases that were basically stripped out. Uh, there's nothing in it except for the power supply and a disk drive. Which, the only reason why I need the disk drive is to install uh, the operating system. But it has USB front 2.0 up front, HD audio. Um, it holds M MATX uh, motherboards. It already has an ATX power supply in it, so I don't need to do much. In fact, the only thing I need to do is... Uh, I need to find a lock uh, cover for this. But yeah, um, that's an El Cheapo case because like I said, it's not it's it's not going to be doing much down here right now except for direct capture for video games. So um, let's just build a PC and see how it goes. Before I do, the operating system I'm going to be using is not Windows 10 or Windows 11. I don't want anything that's going to need that needs to have the internet hooked up to it or that has to have an account. Because I think it's kind of foolish that, I mean, yes, there's a way to do offline mode on Windows 10, but it keeps bugging you to activate it. It keeps bugging you to go online. I don't want that. So I'm actually gonna be installing Linux into this machine. In fact, I'm gonna be installing Ubuntu. Um, it's gonna be Ubuntu 22, 10.4, whatever the current uh, long-term support one is, because I kinda want to make sure this thing's gonna be supported for a while. Um, and I'm actually a little familiar with Linux. Uh, I've used it off and on. Anyway, yes, let's get this thing built and have some fun. First things first is we're going to lift the retaining arm. So I kind of realized this is also going to be like a build guide for building a uh, Intel based uh, PC, technically. So first is we need to lift the retaining arm. And we need to very carefully insert the CPU. Now, Intel CPUs are keyed with two keys on one on each side and it lines up with two notches up here. Set that down carefully. Lower this. And I don't have to worry about taking this off because it'll just snap off when I lock it down. Like so. Voila. Um, I need to find a cooler. I found a bracket. Okay, so I had to go tear apart a uh, an OEM computer that I hadn't got to yet, just so I can get this.
now we need to install the SSD, which, okay, I'm going to do something I really don't want to do or would recommend doing, but since it's a solid state, I don't have to worry about it. I'm just going to kind of let it dangle in here for right now. I know that sounds stupid, but um, I do not have any mounting brackets, like adapters, to screw this into yet, and I don't want to just, you know, randomly just screw it and have it, you know, break something. So I'm just going to set it in here when I plug it in. Yeah, we'll do that route. There's that. And there we go. One capture PC. I'm gonna get Linux installed. Uh, I think I think I said Ubuntu. And then uh, get it hooked up to my game system and I'm going to direct capture something just to make sure it works. And it'll be part of this video. So let's get it hooked up. Okay, so it's the uh, the next day actually. Um, I had to download uh, Ubuntu again. I had a it turns out the version I had was eighteen point six or something, and we're up to uh, twenty two point something. Uh, jam and jellyfish. So yeah, I my image was extremely old. Uh, so I burnt it to a or yeah, burnt it to a USB drive. Um, but before I install Ubuntu, my internet also sucks. It took forever to re-download it. Um, before I install Ubuntu into this, uh, I need to do something. I need to post test it and make sure this works. Uh, because that's always something that's, uh, a concern, uh, when you build a PC is, you know, just, I don't know if the CPU works. I don't know if the RAM fully works. Um, and for all I know, the motherboard might not even work. I don't know. Um, I should have post tested this before I built it. That's my mistake. But I will rectify this real quick by post-testing it, so. Oh, sweet. Okay. So we've got uh, Core 74770 at 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, CPU cores. Cool. All right. Uh, it posts. So we're going to um, let's install Ubuntu. All right, let's see how fast it will post. Should be pretty quick. It's on an SSD. Oh wow, that was quick, holy crap. All right, so we have Jim and Jellyfish, and my mouse is not working correctly. So yeah, uh, this is just a basic uh, Ubuntu installation. We have Firefox, we have Thunderbird Mail, we have audio, all the apps, home. Yeah, I, so I actually have a couple older computers that have um, Linux Mint and that kind of stuff on it. They're not daily drivers or nothing, they're just PCs. So yeah, this is all working. I'm going to get um, OBS installed, and then I'm going to wire this up between all my game consoles and direct capture something. Um, I don't know what to direct capture. Ooh, I do know. I know exactly what I'm gonna do. So let's get this uh, powered back down, plugged in, installed Ubuntu, and go from there. Okay, so I've got the computer hooked up uh, with some of my consoles anyway. I don't know where my, I had a composite capture card, but I don't have that hooked up yet. Um, but we're just gonna see if I can get some footage recorded. And um, I think the first thing I wanna try is, I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna try and get some footage of PS3 and Xbox 360 since that's going through the HDMI uh, capture card. Wanna make sure they all capture correctly and that kind of stuff. The Wii has an HDMI adapter on the back, so that's why I can do that. Um, I would love to do some of the more, more retro consoles like the NES, the Super Nintendo, that kind of stuff to make sure it works, 
but I don't know where my composite capture card is. Um, it was upstairs with my main computer, but I don't know exactly where it is right now. So I'll have to, I'll have to dig for it and uh, get some footage uh, later. So anyway, I just want to make sure the HDMI part of it works. So let's see how that does. Uh, so yeah, ignore the, uh, the jank <laughs> right now. I'm trying to get this thing all set up. I've got a splitter with a switch box right there trying to work. Yeah, we'll see if it works. I need to do, I'm doing some troubleshooting because I'm not getting the sound. It's not recording sound. I, yeah, I'm working on it. Progress. It's actually been a few days uh, since I've uh, built this thing. In fact, it's been quite a while. I've been diagnosing some stuff with the troubleshooting because it hasn't been working correctly. Um, the little snippet you saw with the janky mess, um, that was me uh, trying to figure out what was going on with this thing. So, I actually put this thing together um, and started recording it the day I posted the Atari, or Atari, Apple II, the Bushel of Apples video. I started building it that day. I started recording it that day. Um, the next day I installed Ubuntu because I had to find some parts, which uh, I mentioned earlier. And uh, took it upstairs and installed Ubuntu. Um, I installed OBS, um, the capture software. Uh, and then I brought it down here to try and record some footage. Um, uh, I think I said Wii, PS3, and I think I said Xbox 360, just to make sure it would work. Now, OBS, when I put, installed my Windows 10 machine, ran just fine. But I had some issues when I installed this thing onto uh, this Linux machine. And it's not the fault of Linux. It's my own fault. I will get to that in a second. But, but basically what happened was when I turned on the game console... Uh, to record, the footage was extremely jank. I tried the Wii, the Wii first, um, and the game I tried to play first was Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers for the Wii, just because I played that game so many times before. Um, I actually, the Wii I have now has no memory on it, uh, no game, no gameplay. So all the games I played from the Wii from here on out are going to be freshly played. I know, I know Super Mario Brothers for the Wii inside now. I, f I knew how it was supposed to look, how it was supposed to sound, and that kind of stuff, and I figured I would try that first. Plus, with the Wii having the sensor bar, doing direct capture off the Wii, I thought I was going to have issues with it, and I did. So to kind of clarify my uh, recording setup that was back to that you saw in the in little snippet, the B-roll, um, I bought a HDMI, it's a 3-in, 1-out automatic uh, switcher. It's USB powered, um, and it's plugged into a USB port. Um, on a surge protector or a surge protector behind the uh, television, the flat screen. And that has the Wii with an HDMI adapter, the PS3 and the Xbox 360E all uh, into that splitter and then that output went into HDMI 1 on the flat screen. Silly me thought that I could you know just put in a PC between all that and it would run just fine. And technically it would. But I didn't want to keep having to reach back there to unplug from the capture card and plug into the TV when I just wanted to play a game and not have to record. So I was like, well, I need to find a way to do this. And I was like, oh, smart idea. I'll just get a HDMI splitter, which basically takes the input um, HDMI signal from the switch box and splits it directly one to one, one to one output, one to the other. And my idea was and I think this is—I think this is completely possible. I think this can be done, but for some reason I was having some issues. And you know, HDMI uh, output one went to HDMI one. HDMI output two went into the input on the HDMI capture card on the capture PC, and the output for that PC would go to HDMI two. The idea being, I could take my remote, go to HDMI two, turn on the PC, turn on OBS, click start recording go to HDMI 1 and play the game and just assume it would record. And that's how I was doing it. But all the footage I got from the Wii, the PS3, and the Xbox 360 just wasn't working. It was really garbled. The audio wasn't correct. Uh, it sometimes it wasn't even there. The footage that it did capture was like 1 to 2 frames per second. Um, and for some, and I thought that, well, oh, well, it's just because of the way the computer's set up. I need to take it upstairs to my big computer, my main one. And when I play the footage back, it'll be fine. It's just the way it captured it. It just, whatever. Now, it completely was wrong. 
way wrong. So I was doing a bunch of troubleshooting, a bunch of diagnosing. I tried hooking the weed directly into the HDMI capture card to make sure that it was working correctly. And I was still getting crappy results. I had no idea what was going on. So what I ended up doing was I took it back upstairs, reinstalled Ubuntu off of, uh, uh, I had to reinstall Ubuntu. I had to re-download it first. Uh, I re-downloaded re it, I think for a third time, and tried two different USB drives with two different ways of um, uh, burning the ISO to the uh, USB drive. I used Belena Etcher, and I think I used Rufus. I just wanted to make to cover all my bases. Um, st it's still, when I installed OBS and ran OBS, it still was not running correctly. It was still not recording correctly. I didn't know what was going on. So I installed everything for a third time, and that's why it's been a few days, because I was kind of getting a little frustrated. I took a break uh, while I was installing Ubuntu. Again, I even tried a different operating system. I even tried Linux Mint. Um, and it still didn't work right. For some reason, OBS was not recording right. I did not know what the heck was going on. Um, OBS was, I took the, the Wii upstairs, or I took the, not the Wii, the PS3 upstairs, and I recorded directly onto my big PC, and OBS was detecting it just fine. So my whole thing was, well, maybe there's a problem with OBS on Ubuntu. Maybe it's got an issue. Maybe there's something faulty, something wrong. So I checked some forums, and no, it should be, it, it's the same thing as running on Windows. It should just run just fine. So my fix was, I realized what the problem was. And I'm gonna explain what the problem was, and as soon as I say what it is, hopefully it's either somebody else out there knows what I'm talking about or has experienced this. When I took the computer upstairs to install Ubuntu and OBS, um, I only took the PC upstairs with a keyboard and mouse. Uh, and I decided to um, not take a second monitor. To solve this, I plugged the, oh, this is the super part. I plugged the VGA output into a VGA to HDMI converter and then plug that HDMI converter, which is USB powered, into my USB capture card, which was then plugged into a five hub or five port USB hub that's plugged into the back of my computer. And it was, a US, it was an older hub, it was a USB 2.0, I thought it was gonna be enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was my problem, because when I checked the, because when I checked the, when you're on OBS for the very first time, it will actually try to um, configure itself to your monitor's output, to the output that it's detecting. Well, I think what was going on was it was detecting the VGA to HDMI, to the capture card, the USB hub, I think there was just enough interference and conversions there that it just, it, it was detecting wrong and setting the wrong settings. So I actually just installed OBS up there, brought it all back down here, turned it on and set up OBS that way. I hooked up a second monitor, which was, you saw in the snippet, there's a small little HP monitor with built-in speakers. I ran an audio cable to it. I plugged everything in and it was better. It wasn't perfect, but it was better. It was maybe like 20 frame per second, 25 frame per second, I think like that. Um, but I was getting kind of, what I thought was high CPU usage for, for us, I, I peaked at like 35 or 40%. And for some weird reason, I had it in my head that, oh, well, maybe the CPU is wrong, because that's a lot of usage for just direct capturing, you know, OBS footage. So I popped in a different CPU. I popped in a 4770K and a 4790K that I had sent around. I was getting the same results, so I put the 4770 back in it, which was so much fun. I love redoing thermal paste. And uh, restarted OBS, and everything worked just fine. Um, in fact, I'm gonna show you the, the Wii footage. Because here's the Wii footage of me playing the one level of Mario. Mario Brothers, Wee! 
Now works just fine. It captures just fine. I wish I had more footage, but um, yeah, I actually I've been pulling out enough of my hair, <laughs> clearly, uh, getting this thing to work. Um, but now it does work. Although now my second issue is going to be getting the uh, composite capture to work correctly for the Super Nintendo through the um, the X original Xbox. Um, but that's for a future video. I need to find that capture card first because I do have a horror game I do want to do for October. Before the end of October, I do want to do at least one horror game. I know the game I want to do, but I just have to find my capture card. But yeah, um, this is done. <laughs> I'm done uh, screwing with it. The capture PC is working just fine. Um, no issues. And I don't think I'm going to install another hard drive in here. I think that two, what was I, what did I do? 256? Uh, or 240, whatever it was, gigabyte SSD, that's gonna be more than enough because as long as I pull footage out as I'm done with it for the day, uh, then I shouldn't fill that up too much. Yeah, for the most part, it is done. It captures footage just fine on the HDMI side. I just gotta get the composite for everything else done. Um, but that being said, thanks everyone for watching this video and dealing with this kind of behind the scenes-ish video. So now I can just come down here, hit the power button on the PC, hit the power button on the console and start recording. Or I can just hit the power button on the console and on the TV and I don't have to worry about recording if I just want to play the game, which is kind of also the point of this room. So anyway, yes, um, enough rambling. Uh, if you have any comments, put it down below. Uh, or any questions about the game room itself or why I choose certain parts or why I didn't record any other footage. You know, I have my reason for it. I just got lazy <laughs> because I was kind of fed up with it at, the, at this point. Uh, put it down below and I'll respond to it in a somewhat reasonable fashion, hopefully. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a full game room tour yet. I might do little snippets and stuff because there is some things about this room I don't like um, and it's stuff that I need to address at some point just for a cosmetic look but for the most part yeah i'm not too worried about it um if, anyway the capture pc is done i'm done messing with it i just need to get it all set back to where it was route the cables correctly and uh get everything looking pretty now so i can start just coming down here and recording some footage if you have any comments uh, put them down below um if you want to see me play any uh play any games i have plenty of good games i have things like mario and zeldas and metroids and all that kind of stuff and I also have some bad games, like a crap ton of Wii Shovelware. If I was a masochist. I don't know if I am quite yet. Actually, no, I'll admit I'm a masochist because I decided to wire all this stuff up. But yes, uh, at some point I'm going to get the composite uh, stuff done, so hopefully I can start recording some composite. Why did I say that weird? Composite-based <laughs> consoles, especially on a horror game because there's at least there's a horror game I really want to play because it's actually the first horror game I ever played and it's on the NES Super Nintendo um, that's future thing as soon as I find the composite capture card um, put any comments or questions down below and I'll get to them in a reasonable fashion um, hit the like button if you like the video subscribe to the channel it helps the channel grow so I make bigger and better videos and with that being said thanks everyone for dealing with my rambling 
and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.